There we go. Can you hear me? How's it going, Live Jack? Okay, so we are back, everybody. We have even more content and even more after this. And after that, you guessed it, we have even more. So coming up, we've got Julia, who's going to be talking with us about Implicit CAD. What is Implicit CAD? If you're asking that question, then you're in the right place, because she's going to let us know. So I'm going to pass it off. Let's give her a great big hand. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Julia. I, uh, I'm the one of the Implicit CAD developers. So what Implicit CAD is, is it is a 3D modeling system written in Haskell which I have been working on for the last uh, four years. I, uh, I took it over four years ago when it was in kind of a state of disarray, but we have since taken it to, uh, since taken it a bit further down the path. So Implicit CAD is kind of an open SCAD-ish language if you've used uh, 3D modeling tools before. You've probably looked at uh, open SCAD code, which is this, uh, you know, it looks kind of like C, but you produce objects with it. So it's got your traditional brackets and semicolons and all of that jazz that some people, you know, don't really like about C, but that is the way it is. So uh, it's written in Haskell. So Haskell is a uh, functional programming language and is, has pure functions in it, which makes uh, testing in the language, uh, testing in the language is actually very useful. and makes the product a little bit better. Now, uh, why did I uh, pick up Implicit CAD and keep pushing it down the road? There are basically three reasons. Implicit CAD is AGPL v 3 so it is 100% free software and is going to be 100% free software for as long as there is free software, I think. It's actually uh, v 3 plus, so if, if RMS or somebody comes out with a newer version of the AGPL, it'll be fine. Um, I'm a big advocate of, since 3D printers are such a useful thing, they allow us to produce outside of, outside of manufacturing facilities or any of that kind of uh, infrastructure. And being able to produce like that, it allows the people to actually own our means of production. You can see around here, people are driving around on little scootery things that are halfway held together with 3D printed parts. And while the scooter may not be 100% 3D printed, I'm sure somebody has something close to it here, but the, the pieces that actually hold those things together are usually uh, are, are handy to 3D print. Now, uh, Haskell, as I said, is a uh, functional programming language, which is, uh, it's kind of my thing. I, I like... I like functional programming languages. They allow me to express things in both a mathematic form and in a uh, in a mathematic form and an imperative form. So parts of the program look a little bit like uh, C programs in the sense that there's statements after statements after statements. But many of the pieces of implicit CAD are actually mathematic formulas on the inside. So implicit CAD's internals of the engine are all basically a giant ray tracer, if you've played with ray tracing in the past. So it is a ray trace based system for coming up with 3D models. Now, as I've said before, implicit CAD is a programmatic language. So as you can see here, you kind of, this is uh, the implicit CAD website. You can put in code on one side, literally just hit a button and a, uh, a, piece, of our, a piece of our server will split off and give you a 3D printed model. You don't have to install it because, well, installing Haskell sometimes can get very complicated. So we put together this website. It lets you just put something in, get an object out, and then feed that directly to your 3D printer. So I've been working on this for about four years now, and we've implemented a good system for testing. So we're using HBEC tests everywhere. So every, every time that we make a release, we know that everything that we've done before is actually tested. Um, additionally, I've been working on a, uh, on a slicer to go with it. When you 3D print, you 3D print normally by putting down layer after layer after layer of plastic. And Implicit CAD is a modeling system. But by having a slicer, that is written in the same sort of setup, we get to, uh, well, 
it allows us to use better models inside the slicer as well. The slicer is kind of a new thing, so it's still uh, in progress. Implicit CAD, you can write an object in Implicit CAD, feed it to the slicer, and then have something ready for your 3D printer to just go. Um, the website and all of that is here on, your, here on the screen. You can just hit the website, put in information about the object you want to create, get out the object you're looking for. All the source code of all these uh, utilities is v 3 So get a hold of me or get, hit the mailing list if you're uh, interested in the project. Thank you. Questions? Yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Give Julie another hand. All right, we are going to take about a 10 minute break. We're tracking down a couple of people to get them up here. Go grab some food, go grab some life, whatever it is that is out there for you. Um, just be sure to come back.